I'm Jamie Buckingham. Shalom from Israel. Recently, I talked to the director of the world's largest missionary organization. I asked him what was the most frequent request he received from missionaries who were returning to the States on furlough. All of them, he said, say they need one thing more than anything else. They need teaching on spiritual authority. They want to learn how to cast out demons. And they also want to know more about those invisible agents of God who do battle with demons, angels. Just as I've had my own experience with demons, I've had experience with angels also. Early one morning, before I went into major cancer surgery in Houston, my wife and three others came into my room and called on Jesus to send his angels. Shortly afterwards, lying on the table in the operating room, I looked up just before they administered the anesthesia. And they were there, scores of them, standing around the walls of the operating room. Across the years, men and women, boys and girls everywhere, have had experience with angels. In this video you are about to see, made just before Easter during the season of Lent, I'm in a shepherd's field outside Bethlehem. There, poor shepherds were privileged to see the greatest gathering of angels in human history. It's impossible to think about the life of Jesus while he was on earth without thinking about the angels who constantly surrounded him, ministering to him, protecting him. It began at this place in the shepherd's field outside Bethlehem where I am today. It was here the greatest angel visitation known to man took place. The skies were full of them from horizon to horizon, heralding the birth of the Messiah. But the angels in Jesus' life went back earlier than his birth, 15 months before the birth of Christ. An angel appeared to an old Jewish priest named Zechariah, who was ministering in the temple in Jerusalem. Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to give him the name John. He became known as John the Baptist. Six months later, 90 miles north in the little town of Nazareth, another angel Gabriel, with a similar message, appeared to a simple teenage girl named Mary. Hail, the angel said, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Nine months later, in this same field where I'm standing, shepherds were abiding in the field, keeping watch o'er their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. I memorized those verses when I was a child, along with all those wonderful Christmas carols about angels. sang over this field, returned to heaven, but not for long, for they continued to make their appearances throughout the life of Jesus. In fact, as we approach the end of the age, angel appearances are once again taking place. From all over the world come reports of angel sightings. That's not surprising. The term angel, angelos in Greek, means simply messenger. They are God's special delivery messengers, and they seem to take many shapes and forms. Sometimes they appear as heavenly beings. At other times, angels appear in human form. Paul warns us to be careful about turning away strangers, lest we turn away an angel unawares. Some angels are ministering angels. They minister to God around his throne. Others minister to us here on earth. 
especially to those who have great needs. A respected Episcopal priest, a friend of mine, told me of the time when a man who had just received word that he was going blind stopped by his church to ask for prayer before entering the hospital. Together, they entered the empty, semi-dark sanctuary where the man knelt at the altar. As they prayed, the priest looked up, and there, hovering around the kneeling man, were dozens of small angels. They were, he said, ministering to him. The next day, the doctors sent the man home from the hospital. They could find no trace of the earlier disease. He was healed. After Jesus had been tempted by Satan in the Judean wilderness, just a few miles from here, the Bible says the angels came and ministered to him. The night before Jesus was crucified, he came to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. It was an agonizing time, and his prayer was so intense that he sweated blood, physically and emotionally exhausted. He leaned against one of those huge olive trees, and an angel came from heaven came and strengthened him, ministered to him. Angels rolled away the stone from the grave of Jesus the morning of his resurrection. Then they waited for the first light and spoke to the women who came to anoint his body. Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is risen. Finally, angels surrounded him on the Mount of Olives as he ascended into heaven following his resurrection. Turning to those who were still looking, they said, This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you've seen him go into heaven. Today, as we close out this first week of Lent, keep your eyes and ears open for angels. God may have a special message just for you.